Hey, so I've split this video into two parts. The part one is uh, cleanup, making sure that the poses are interpolating okay, and that means you know there's no flipping, there's no oil or filter issues, um, you know that there's reasonable breakdowns enough that the paths make sense, and that you know when you need to start doing your constraints or fake constraints, whatever. You know that there's enough room for things like arms and torsos that things won't be. Um, penetrating and passing through each other. So just, you know, making sure that your core poses are clean enough that you're not going to have some major issues down the line. And starting with this file, um, there is some good blocking, but there was, uh, obviously you can see the torso flipping a lot there. Um, and each one of the, the limbs on the blue guy there, there was also a good amount of oiler filter flipping and whatnot in the feet and arms. So this first part, I'm really just kind of taking my time and kind of correcting some of that. Um, at, at first, I used the global offset to change the last two keyframes and to get rid of that flipping that's happening in the torso. Um, but then I, I move on to the limbs, and I kind of just uh, do it by hand. Earlier in this demo, I've set my camera to have a focal length of about 100, and then the near clip plane to be about one, and the far clip plane to have an extra two zeros at the end. And this allows my camera to be more orthographic and give me a better view of the overall pose structure. And you can see I'm 90 degrees moving around, kind of simulating a top view, a bottom view, a side view, a uh, front view really quickly. And it's giving me just full visibility in a 360 sense without needing tons of windows open. So I, I recommend that work. Well, um, but yeah, playing it over and over, making sure the paths are correct, um, not worried about constraints or anything. In fact, um, you may see that uh, I am devising a picker every now and again because I can't really animate without pickers, so uh, you'll see me pull it on this monitor every now and again. Um, so I create two pickers for these guys, and I'm really just dealing with the feet pole vectors, torso or cog, none of the back controls, uh, none of the head controls. I'm not worried about that. This is just, you know, this is like pre-blocking or advanced pre-vis, somewhere in between the two because you're not getting too perfect with the poses, but there's a lot of work done to, in, the, in a complicated grapple move like this to make sure that, you know, like the spins are correct, um, but also the, it's a spatial puzzle and you need to make sure that the path is correct. It doesn't need to be perfect, but, uh, you know, it's, it's called blocking for a reason. So we're just need to make sure this is blocked out in a nice fashion. Okay. Part two, um, I won't speed this part up nearly as much so you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about, at least here in the beginning. So I'm going to use mostly the copy X form, um, function in AtomBot to get these grapple points on the hands and things with it correct. But before I, I do that, I want to set up some quick select buttons. And I like doing this because um, it just makes it things easier to select down the line when you need to do it multiple times. So I know I want this hand on this guy's elbow. And since we don't have the elbow in FK, I need to grab the actual joint. So here I am grabbing the joint, uh, making a quick select set button for that elbow. And then I know my other grapple point here, that arm should be up on that shoulder. And I have a control for that shoulder. So I don't need to select the joint. I'm just going to make a button for that shoulder so that when I'm copying my relationship with the hand and the shoulder, I have these easy buttons to do it. Conversely, I could have used my picker, but since we're talking about Atombot, let's just stick with Atombot. So I'm creating these buttons for the grapple point, but also the hand that's grappling. So we've gotten the hand and the shoulder, we've got the hand and the elbow joint here. And so those four buttons have been created. Um, I'm going to create the blue guy grapple points later. We're just going to do the red guy first. Um, turning on the tips just so it's a little bit more obvious where my mouse is hovering over. And there's the copy X form button. That's your main bread and butter. The way that works is you, you need to have the two controls selected that you 
care about, you care about their relationship, you need to have them selected. So here I've got the hands and that elbow joint selected, and I'm clicking just once, left click, and you get a little button there, your message there saying uh, relationship copied. And then the button I have next to it, uh, which you can get to if you don't have it, you can set your Anabot workspace to include it. Um, it's just the paste button I have uh, right next to the copy button. So by clicking paste, my hand automatically goes to the elbow uh, wherever it was. It remembers that relationship, no matter where I am on my timeline. So you can do this on a per frame rate basis and create your own keyframes that way. But you can also say, you know, well, what if I wanted to move the blue guy's elbow around, but I still want that hand to stick? You know, how do I see what that relationship looks like? Well, uh, you can do that by right-clicking. Uh, there it is. And you want to click auto, um, auto export relationship. So now every time you do anything, any operation in Maya, it's going to fake that constraint. See how that arm is still on that elbow? But there is no constraint. The only reason it's updating is because uh, it's running a quick process every time you change the, the timeline or, or anything, really. If I were to move the elbow, it would update again. So it's not keying, and it's not doing a real constraint, but it's updating for me in case I wanted to key on there that I could then key, and it would be like as if I had a constraint. Do note, because it is not a real constraint, the interpolation between your keyframes is going to be, you know, it's it's going to be as if there was no constraint, meaning it's not going to stick to the shoulder. If you wanted it to stick to the shoulder um, every single frame, you could right click and bake that copy relationship every frame. But do note, you know, whenever you change the blue guy's shoulder, that relationship will change. Um, here's why I like working this way. In this kind of setting where you got these two guys grappling on each other, there are no two frames where their hand is just stuck on the same part of a body, um, just completely one-to-one -one parented. That never really happens. There's always a little bit of shifting around, you know, like we do with the balls of our feet. That kind of thing happens a lot with the, the hands as well. The twisting, the tilting, the rolling of the palm, all those things are always happening. And so really in an exercise like this, you don't need them to be planted on a part of a body perfectly and certainly not for very long so it's more advantageous for you to kind of work in this workflow where you have at the click of a button you're able to put that hand in the you know the relative space that you know it needs to be and then make your slight adjustments that happen in real life where the hand will start to roll and shift and, and slightly twist into another position as time goes along and that way you don't have these hands stuck on things and feeling very CG and unanimated. So you, you, you want to figure out, think about like, are my hands on something for a thousand frames? Maybe that this isn't the best workflow for you, in which case you might want to set up real constraints or temp, control, temp controls that, you know, mimic better interpolation. But for something quick like this, uh, t constraint, uh, the x form relationships are the way to go because it's quick uh, you never have to worry about turning on and off constraints and the auto constraint i oh, sorry auto x form there is there for you if you need it i found that in doing this exercise i'm keeping it off more than on um, but say i liked all my hand positions and i was i was down the line on this shot and i'm doing polish and I want to make an adjustment on the body rather than the hands, well, then that's going to be a situation where I would want to turn that back on because I would want to see that cascading effect on the hands. Um, yeah, so, and, and you can make it work with three controls as well, uh, multiple controls. It does multiple relationships, not just two objects. So if you wanted to get both hands included on following one thing like the torso, you can do that as well. But yeah, for the rest of this video, I am uh, really just kind of um, pinning things using this copy X form relationship workflow. Um, you know, I'm also adding in some breakdowns so with the, the hands and arm motion make a little bit more sense in 360. And note, you know, like I'm talking about, how, note how I'm treating the camera. 
I'm just rotating 90 degrees, more or less, um, when I feel like I, I can't animate the axis I need, or axis I need from this angle, I'll just shift it 90 degrees. Sometimes I'll look straight down from above, but it's very handy to work this way. Yeah, so I, I don't have any really new information. It's just the rest of this is just me copying my uh, X form poses where I want them to be and kind of experimenting. This allows you to be really quick with experimenting as opposed to constraints, which take a little bit more finessing. So I hope this video helped. Um, thank you very much and happy animating. Do visit www.patreon.com slash drobal to get all your drobally needs. Uh, yeah, sorry.